majority of people are somewhere in the center. They're somewhere in the center. And this area right here, I would consider this the political compass thing. Like this little, you know, diamond square in the middle is actually probably, you know, represented best by this, which is to say, you're a mix, you're a little bit of this, you're a little bit of that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it's, this is kind of a confusing mess of like, all right, well, maybe in some sense, I really do like socially liberal policies, but I only like socially liberal policies if they agree with my personal morality. Now, if that's the case, you're technically probably, you know, a little bit more on the, uh, you know, liberal side than conservative side, but, you know, I mean, or, well, uh, conservative side, then you are, you know, liberal left, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, it becomes confusing, but essentially, if you look at, look, how much do you think the government should be involved in your life? As a libertarian, I believe it should be involved as little as possible. Ideally, in a totally, absolutely ideal world, I would love to say that, you know, every human being, every individual should be their own boss and should essentially have no other authority than themselves, uh, which is the sort of most basic anarchist view. Unfortunately, we don't live in that ideal world where in which, you know, I think material scarcity will kind of bar any real anarchist views because it will devolve into sort of like, you know, people not being able to get what they want or need and therefore, you know, resorting to violence and other types of things to get it. So you do need some level of government. As a libertarian, the general consensus is the government has a few basic responsibilities and outside of those responsibilities, it should, you know, just leave well enough alone because it doesn't do a good job at managing anything else or anything in general, really. But there are a few aspects of life in a society that are still, even if they're not best run by a, you know, objective state agency, there are significant advantages to it being, you know, abstracted to that as opposed to a private industry. Generally, those responsibilities are thought to be the common defense, essentially against, you know, foreign uh, invaders, outsiders, these types of things. So a military, basically. The other responsibility would be a judicial system, some sort of objective third party that can adjudicate disputes between individuals and entities within the state. Outside of that, there's not really a lot that most libertarians would say the government is good enough at to entrust them with the responsibility of managing. So in terms of business, corporate, XYZ, all these types of things, to be honest, better to leave that to the individuals and the courts. And enlightened self-interest will prevail. So companies will not put out horrible, harmful products because if they do, they're aware that they will be sued into oblivion, they'll lose all of their money, and they'll lose all the potential to make money in the future because their names will be mud. So, hey, you know what? Instead of saving half a cent on every product that we ship and then losing all of our money, let's just pay the extra half cent to 
make a safe, you know, toddler toy. And we'll make more money in the long run. It'll be better for us, and it's better for everyone involved. Now, the fiscal progressive view is much more like, you know what? We think the government can absolutely manage the economy by creating incentives and regulating certain industries to do certain things. And this will create a better society. There are innumerable examples of this just simply not working out such that I don't think a, you know, command economy works. The amount of shortages, the amount of, you know, inflation, the amount of just unintended consequences in a complex economy are, it's, it's too big of a problem. You just cannot, you don't have enough computational power in the government, with all of the people in the government, all the computers, all the everything that they've got, they just simply cannot solve these problems such that anytime they do attempt to weigh in on a certain issue, they end up usually not actually solving the issue and then also creating a bunch of new problems. So, one example that I literally just saw was, uh, hey, sesame seeds. Some people are allergic to sesame seeds. So the government is going to go, all right, well, hey, we don't want anybody to get sick, have allergic reactions from sesame seeds. Let's require every food manufacturer to disclose whether or not any of their food might come into contact with sesame seeds seeds. Sounds great. I who, who would be opposed to that? Well, turns out that sesame seeds are, you know, difficult to keep track of, and if you've got a food processing plant, it's entirely possible that, you know what, there might be some sesame seeds in some of your stuff. So instead, Instead of spending all of this money, all of this time, all of these issues, trying to track down every single itty bitty tiny sesame seed, we're just going to add sesame seeds to all of our products. We're just going to, and we're going to then put it on the ingredients. That way we know where all of our sesame seeds are. They're everywhere. Technically, that is complying with the law. Except now, all those people that are allergic to sesame seeds are kind of left with way less choices. Because now everything has sesame seeds in it. don't have 
either of those things. So I think libertarianism makes the most sense in terms of an immediate policy direction that essentially means shrinking government. Taking power away from government would also decrease the attractiveness of government corruption. If the government doesn't have a power to regulate your industry, well then guess what? That industry is not going to be spending a whole bunch of money lobbying the government to corrupt its officials and carve out special dispensations for them. Amazon just has to compete against everybody else. It doesn't get a special government dispensation like it does now. They get a whole bunch of extra tax breaks that makes it super difficult to compete with them. If the government can't give those tax breaks out, well then guess what? Amazon becomes a lot more competitive. There's a lot more people that could go, hey, you know what? I think we could maybe be the next Amazon. Let's give it a shot. But let me know what you think in the comments. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on this. Also, I want to know how many of you have seen this chart before as compared to this chart. Let me know. Thank you for your time and attention. I really appreciate it. Good luck in all your endeavors. And I shall say farewell for...